All right, I'm gonna get started. If you could just mute out your lines for me, please. Thank you. So my name is Noelle Schroeder and I'm a sales coordinator with the Juice Plus company. And I am gonna to talk tonight about how to manage your time in your Juice Plus business. And uh, I was just saying the irony of it was that I didn't even realize I was covering the call tonight until Danielle asked on the Team Rock thread, where's the flyer for tonight's call? What's it about? <laughs> and, and I looked at my calendar and I went, whoops. <laughs> so I decided to choose managing your time, ironically enough, because I feel like it's a very uh, fluid topic for me and one that I'm constantly learning how to get better at. And I feel like I've, you know, I've mastered some things and I'm still wanting to get better at others. And I think it's something that is uh, relevant for everyone. I think no matter how busy we are um, and how good we are at managing our time, there's always, I think in today's fa very fast paced world that we live in, um, it's a challenging topic to, to manage your time. So um, just a little bit about me. I joined the Juice Plus company and started taking the Juice Plus products at the same time, uh, four years ago this month. So this is my juice anniversary, And uh, I, I was an entrepreneur for many years. And so I had uh, some practice in managing my time before that. But my business still kind of owned me in terms of my schedule because I did a dollars for hours service, which was uh, energy healing and yoga, private practice and classes. So my classes were, you know, locked into my schedule. Those were non-negotiables. And then I had to work my clients around those classes and, and figure out, you know, the travel time and, and the logistics because I was between Boston and Newburyport and I lived in the Newburyport area. So I had to commute, I had to factor in the commute and, you know, still, still figure out how to manage my personal time and my personal care time and just time off and all of that. And there was definitely a separation between my business and my life, although I felt like I lived the mission then because I was practicing yoga and practicing the energy healing skills that I was teaching. I was still very much aware of, you know, work and play. They were very much separate parts of my life. And in the Juice Plus world, it's a little different. You know, they blend a lot. And so sometimes it can be, I mean, there's a benefit to that in many ways, but it can also be a challenge because sometimes you really have to extricate yourself and separate yourself to just clear your head and get away from the business for a while. At least that's what I find. But so much of my self-care and living the mission and the community come with the business. So it, what I love about it is it's very seamless with my life, but on the other, excuse me, but on the other hand, sometimes I need to just put the phone away and take a break and, you know, watch a goofy movie or, you know, go shopping or do something just completely mindless that has nothing to do with Juice Plus for a little while. And then I have this space in my head again to come back and, you know, refocus. So the first thing I'll say is, you may have seen this exercise or heard of this exercise before, but if you were to take a glass jar and fill it with big rocks, you would think that that jar was full. And those big rocks would represent the most important parts of your life. And then you would realize that there are these little nooks and crannies between the big rocks where you can fit in some smaller rocks. And those smaller rocks kind of fall into place and you think the jar is full, but then you realize there's still room in there for smaller rocks and then eventually sand. And so you can think about your big rocks as your number one prior priorities, your non-negotiables. And as you get smaller down the line to the smaller and smaller rocks, those are the things that maybe are a little bit more negotiable or that you can kind of fit in and you know, weave in as needed. 
So we're going to focus on your Juice Plus business, but you'll see how there are places where your business and your life will probably overlap. Um, so the first question to ask is just, what are my priorities about my business? What are the most important aspects of my business that I want to implement every day? And what are those big rocks? What are those non-negotiables? And I put those non-negotiables in my calendar and that helps me cement it in my mind, but also if it's in my calendar, then when I go to schedule something, I have to make a decision, right? I have to schedule around those things that are in my calendar. Now, if it's, if there's something in my calendar that in my mind is potentially a negotiable item, well, then I might do some overlapping or I might schedule something in place of that. But my non-negotiables are absolutely on my calendar. They're in my electronic calendar and I schedule around them accordingly. And what's really cool about our business is that living the mission means self-care. And that is a huge aspect of our business that hopefully is a priority in your life. And if it hasn't been in the past, joining this business makes it a priority because if you're not living the mission, it's difficult to talk about the products and self-care and healthy living. It's, it's difficult to be considered an expert on healthy living or a resource around healthy living if you're not practicing it. So you really have to practice what you, what you preach you have to walk the walk for people to really believe what you're telling them and believe what you're talking about. So living the mission and self-care, the priorities around that would be, in my view, your mindset. So things like meditation, affirmations, um, any kind of spiritual practice that you might have, whatever you do, to get your mind in a space to um, feel good for the day, to feel focused, to be ready to tackle the day and whatever is on your agenda. Uh, exercise is another component of self-care and that doesn't necessarily have to be rigorous exercise. It doesn't necessarily have to take a long time, but how are you moving your body, stretching your body, strengthening your body, getting your heart rate up? And it doesn't even necessarily have to be every day, but I would, I would say most days, right? Are you taking in the nutrition you need in addition to your Juice Plus? Are you drinking enough water? Are you getting enough sleep? So a lot of times we make these things the sand in the jar when really they should be some of the bigger rocks. And then what about your personal development? Is there a book you're reading and do you have time to read that book? Do you carve out the time? Or maybe you're better at listening to a book on Audible and are you listening? When are you giving yourself time to listen to that? I do a lot of listening, a lot of my personal development listening while I'm walking the dogs and when I'm driving in my car. And that, for me, that's a way to save time and to make sure I get it in. I might also listen while I'm cleaning the house. So sometimes just doing menial tasks around the house is a good time to listen as long as you don't have to take notes. <clears throat> So then we get into more of the heart of our business, which is, and there's a lot, right? It's sometimes it's, it's difficult to figure out how to prioritize all these things. And I'm just gonna list them in no particular order, but we've got social media. We need to be reaching out and inviting and following up. We have events to attend, and those might be one-to-one -one meetings, Zoom calls, phone calls, connection calls, conference calls, live group events. Some of us do a fair amount of networking to go meet new people, to find new people, to invite to those events. And we, we do need to figure out 
different ways to find those new people. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a networking event, but you know, one of my ways to meet new people besides my networking events is to take this favorite class I have at the Y and I, I'm making friends in there and making connections and have brought on a team member and she's brought on a customer in that class. And so that's another way that I'm networking or finding new people. And then we need time to field all of the correspondence, right? So if we've reached out, we've been inviting, we're following up, now we have to have time to respond to the replies. So we need to you know, be checking email, checking Facebook message, text, and responding to those things. We need time to listen to conference calls. If we miss the live ones, do we have time in our day at some point to listen to the recordings? And again, maybe that's in the car or while you're cleaning the house or while you're walking, um, you know, exercising. Maybe you're on the treadmill or the elliptical or something. And then we need time when we're creating events, we need time to create the flyers for those events and the event pages. And then we need time to launch new team members and to duplicate. So it's a long list and it can feel like we're working 24 hours a day. <laughs> Most people in this business have a full-time job or another business and children and, 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 and so they're really having to be very strategic about their time. They're really having to narrow down, you know, certain blocks of time during the day when they can that they can dedicate to Juice Plus. So I kind of divide the time up into inspirational moments. So maybe you have those moments when you somebody comes pops into your head and you go, "Oh my gosh, I should invite them to that Cortese call tonight because she has an aging parent that is, you know, dealing with a lot of health issues and they may want to listen to the call, you know, about seniors that's happening tonight at 830. So I should send them the flyer. And in that inspirational moment, I try, as long as I'm not driving, to do it right then and there. <laughs> because if I don't, I'm likely to forget. <laughs> I could write it down and, you know, make a list. So that's another option. And sometimes I do that, but I'm not a great list maker. So it's better in that moment that I'm inspired to do it immediately so that it's done and I don't forget. And then we have the woven moments, right? So throughout the day, maybe we're in the middle of another task or we're in between activities. And so we have a few minutes to check our phones or check email and say, okay, who's responded? Who do I need to reply to? Do I have anything pressing or urgent right now that I need to answer? Most of the stuff that's coming in is not urgent. As Kelly Farrar once said, there is no Juice Plus emergency. So, and I love that, right? So we really don't have to panic about getting back to somebody that second. We've gotten into this culture and I am really guilty of it, of like instantaneous replies. And so we um, sort of expect people to reply right back. And then we sort of, we expect that of ourselves. And so sometimes I have to like really make a conscious effort to like ignore the unread texts and the unread boxers and the unread Facebook messages, because I know if I look at them, I'm going to need to answer them because there's no way to flag them or mark them as unread, like with email. Right. So I better just ignore them because in this moment I cannot respond to them because I'm in the middle of something else that's very important. So I'm going to, save them until I have a few minutes and then go back and respond. Nobody's going to die if they have to wait a few hours for you to respond to their text or Facebook message or Voxer. <clears throat> the only thing that could be urgent would be, you know, a Voxer message like I have somebody on the phone right now who is available for a connection call. If you're not available, you're not available. You know, you can't be expected to do it to do it that second. If you are available, awesome, seize the moment. But you know, you can't 
you can't kill yourself trying to get to those things. Nothing is that urgent. So we have inspirational moments, we have woven moments, and then what I would call focus time that we can purposely carve out, right? So, okay, I know in the morning I have 15 minutes between, you know, 8 and 8.15 before I have to get ready to leave the house. So I'm going to sit and do whatever this is. Maybe it's my meditation time, or maybe it's my reaching out and inviting and following up time. Um, maybe that's when I'm going to do my social media posting. So whatever, you know, those blocks of time are, and they might, you know, they might be scattered throughout the day. You might have 15 minutes here and 15 minutes there and 15 minutes there. And that's where we get into time blocking, right? Creating blocks of time where you're going to focus on certain things. And the focus is key because it's very easy. And again, I'm guilty of this at times where, especially if I'm using Teamsy and I'm doing my reaching out and inviting and following up and I'm on a roll and now I've got stuff coming in that's replying to that or somebody calls me randomly that has nothing to do with who I'm reaching out to and I get distracted and I feel the need to respond to those things right there and then. And I have to really discipline myself and say, finish what you're doing, <laughs> finish your reaching out and you're inviting and you're following up before you go respond to everybody. Because once again, you don't have to respond right away. And the most important thing, the big rock, one of your big rocks should be reaching out, inviting and following up every day. Even if you only do 15 to 30 minutes or at the most an hour, what they say in Team Z is your power hour. But you know, power hour is flexible. Maybe it's 45 minutes one day, maybe it's an hour and 15 the next. But if you really focus and you don't respond to everything else that's coming in, it shouldn't take you that long. I find when it's taking me long, it's because I'm letting myself get distracted by all the other things coming in. So one thing I will say that I was talking to Kelly about the other day, and this is about inviting. So I'm just kind of going back. This is a little bit of an aside, but I think it's a bit of a time saver. What I've noticed about Facebook events recently is that when I actually use the invite button and I just invite, 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 we used to frown, frown on that and we used to say, just do the private, you know, individual text message or Facebook message. I am finding that when I do those invites, people are much more responsive to those than they used to be. And I think it's that people are now used to the idea of a Facebook event they're actually going to that Facebook calendar. They're looking for what's on their calendar that maybe they haven't put in their real calendar. Um, they're seeing notifications, especially if people are posting in there, even if they're posting to say they can't make it, that's prompting a notification in somebody's Facebook page. Um, if, if you're posting in the event page, often they're gonna be likely to see that event and respond to it. So, what I'm finding is the private message is lovely and it's still a really great way to invite, but I'm finding it to be secondary to, you know, doing the initial inviting. And here's why, because today I went through to invite to the wine and wellness that's happening next Wednesday at Kelly's house. I took the time to go through my entire friends list. You know, when you hit the invite button, it starts to show you your friends. And then if you hit all friends, it starts with letter A and goes through the entire al alphabet. It can take a while. But I am finding that I am inviting more people because there's so many people I'm not remembering if I do the individual text messaging. And if I do the individual text messaging, I'm also, I don't have as much time to do a lot of individual text messaging, right? So I think the individual text messaging is important for maybe your most important people, your, your hottest prospects that you really want to be there. 
But I noticed so many people that I would have left out had I not gone through my entire friends list and hit the invite button. So guess how many people I ended up inviting today to that one event? It was like 150 or 200 people. So there's a good chance that I might have 10 guests at that event because now I'm going to go back and hit my hot prospects with individual messages. So do you see where you're covering more ter territory by hitting that invite button and just going to town and inviting everybody and then going back and, and, and sending private messages to those special, you know, those really special people that you really want to be there. So that's a time saver. And it's, it's an efficient and effective way I feel like of inviting that wasn't so effective maybe two years ago. <clears throat> so one more tool that I'm finding helpful is the app. It's now an app as well as, um, so it's now an app you can download onto your phone as well as your computer. It's called Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y. There may be better ones out there. I just found this one to be very simple. And you can, it's not your master calendar. You can create blocks of time where people can book anywhere from 15 to 30 to 45 to an hour's worth of time with you. And when people book in those times and those times no longer look available and you get to decide what's available from day to day, from week to week. And then you just send people the link and they can book with you. And right now I'm not using that for networking or prospects. I'm just solely using it for my team. So it's for me right now, it's just a tool for scheduling coaching calls and three-way connection calls so that we're not doing all this back and forth about what time works for you, what time works for you, what time works for you, what time, you know, it's just, here's my link, here are some times I have available, see if any of these match. And then I'm letting people know, look, if, if we can't find any times that match, then, you know, there are other times in my schedule I just haven't put on that link because I've been sort of prioritizing, right? And saying, these are not times I want to do three-way connection calls, but if push comes to shove, yeah, I'll, I'll make time for that, right? Three-way connection call is really important. Coaching call is really important, but here are the, you know, the premium times that I have available this week. And so my team is getting used to that and they're booking with me, which is great because it's giving us more opportunities to connect by Zoom or on the phone with their prospects or um, to talk about their next steps in their business and to kind of do a check-in. So I just wanna give you an example of some of the non-negotiables that are on my calendar that I, don't, uh, that I don't negotiate with myself around scheduling anything else during those times. Uh, the Monday night Team Rock and Cortese calls. I don't schedule anything on Monday nights. The, um, my B, I'm in a B&I and I'm the president of the chapter. Uh, even if I wasn't president of the chapter, that's a non-negotiable because attendance is required. But I do have some additional leadership responsibilities. So those have to be embedded in my calendar, non-negotiable. I also attend a women's group every other week and I'm on the leadership team for that. So those meetings are non-negotiable. And my bar class at the Y, twice a week. I don't schedule anything during bar. That is sacred time for me. I cannot miss bar. That's just like, nope, when people want to meet on Monday or Friday morning, I'm like, how about 11? <laughs> That's when I get out of my class. Um, and then really my early morning time. So if somebody wants to meet with me at like eight o'clock, like to do networking or something, I, I really try and avoid that at all costs. If I have to, I will, because my early morning time is for me. Like I am not a morning person. I need a slow wake up. I need time to meditate. I need time to sit and have my smoothie and take my juice plus drink my coffee and I need my sleep and I need 
probably more sleep than the average person. So that to me is like, don't expect me to be anywhere really early, except for the morning I have BNI. And that is painful when I have to do that Tuesday mornings, let me tell you, especially after Monday night Cortese call. <laughs> but so even though I don't really put that in my calendar, that is sacred non-negotiable time for me that I really, do, I just don't book anything at those times. And then I might start networking or going to meetings mid to late morning. And then I really try to have my afternoons free for my work in front of the computer to do Teamsy, my three-way connection call time, my coaching call time. And then sometimes in the evening, um, I allow time for coaching or connection calls. And then sometimes I'm at events, right? But I also try not to be out, you know, more than two nights a week. Three is my max, absolute max. Um, and I will not do four. Like I was invited to four different things on four different nights this week. And I'm like, nope, what are my big rocks? And what are my little rocks? And, you know, I, like something's got to give. Where two years ago, three years ago, I was trying to do all of it. And it was wearing me out. So I have learned, nope, can't do it. Can't do it all. I've <laughs> got to move on let it go. And then of course you're coming back into your personal life, right? You need to, I need time to walk my dogs. I need family time. I need time to hang out with Eric and watch a movie or just watch baseball or just, you know, do not something mindless. Um, need fun time, need time to reward myself, need time to go get a pedicure. So just, you know, how are you factoring in those parts of your life too. Don't think of those as the sand. They're, they're still fairly big rocks. They can probably be more flexible about where they go into your calendar, but they should go in your calendar somewhere because that's part of your self-care. So I have the luxury of doing this business full time. Now I did have an energy healing client today, but like at most I have her once a week. So that's one hour <clears throat> out of my entire week dedicated to something else. For most people, they're having to really, like I said, block and ration out their time for these big rocks. So, you know, I can't tell you how you're going to do that, but just what I can suggest is really listing out what are your priorities from, you know, number one and ranking them down. And then how are you going to fit those in accordingly? So that you have time for you, you have time for self-care, you have time to live the mission while you work your business, while you do your other job, while you run around with your kids and make sure you get enough sleep. Right, Jess? <laughs> I don't even know what that means anymore. <laughs> I really don't. I also have the luxury. I'm like, give me a half hour. Yeah, I also have oh, having my children. So I'm one of the rare few that, you know, has a lot of freedom in my schedule to manage it the way I want. Um, and I did that on purpose. But, you know, so I get that everybody has, you know, a lot of different things challenging their schedule. And even with the freedom that I have, I still find myself, you know, struggling at times to manage it all. But it really is about your priorities um, for your life and also your priorities for your business. And I would say your number one priority every day for your business, besides living the mission, is reaching out to people, inviting and following up. Not organizing your desk not filing your paperwork. Although if you saw my desk right now, you'd be like, Noelle, you need to do some filing. Um, <laughs> so, you know, if you, get, if you get to nothing else over the course of your day for your business, you know, take a half an hour to reach out, invite and follow up. Any questions or anything anybody want to add? Hey, Noelle. Hey. You did awesome. 
Thanks. So it's really, really good, good information. And that analogy with the jar, I have heard multiple times before, but forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And it is so easy to fill the jar with sand mm -hmm. and forget about the big rocks. So yes. thank you. Thank oh, you for the reminder. And um, also just a little FYI.